Okay, so there are going to be some moments when you're first starting with this where you are going to be like, oh my gosh, I did everything she said. Something isn't right. And I'm telling you, it's going to be in here. Just just stick with it and be patient and know that the, the brain likes to, to burn as little calories as possible. We're not wired to thrive. We are wired to survive. So breathe, take a deep breath, and I'm going to help you troubleshoot a couple things that always stumped me in the beginning. So let's start with one. Um, I can't hear my vocal. Okay, so you're probably working with an interface, especially if you're brand new to this, that might only have um, like two channels on it, for example. And so your microphone is going to be plugged into one of those channels. And let's say that the second one has your guitar, which is going to be with a quarter inch. Your mic is going to go in with an XLR, right? Well, they're labeled one and two. So for example, when I create a new audio track, audio, it's asking me which input I'm in, right? So if your vocal is on input one, you're going to want to select input one. And then once you do that, your vocal should pop up. For me, see how there's nothing going on right there? That's because my input is actually input two because I have my guitar in input one. But when I do that, hello, 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 you can see now that it's triggered, right? So if I was going to do, let's say my guitar is plugged into input two, select input, uh, you know, two or one or wherever your guitar is plugged into, and then you create, and then you should have sound automatically. If you still cannot hear your vocal after doing that, make sure that you have gone to this adjust this control panel and that you have added, we did this earlier, the software monitoring. And then when you do, this is going to sound a little funny on my end, but it'll be there and then you'll be able to hear yourself. It won't sound like that. <laughs> um, I don't have it enabled because of the nature of what I'm doing to record this video. Um, so try that if you still cannot hear your vocal. And by the way, guys, troubleshooting, it sucks. It's part of the journey. It's part of the process. Like nobody's going to just jump into this and go, oh yeah, I totally get this. Like there's going to be some hiccups, but I'm here to support you. Just drop some, uh, you know, shoot me an email. Sometimes they get a little heavy on the workload and it's hard to get to everybody at once. So just like, I will be super active in the Facebook group, make sure to get in there and uh, you can even share like screenshots or share a video of what you're trying to do. And um, I know that we're all going to be able to help each other out in there. If you keep getting tripped up while in the middle of recording, meaning your computer freezes and it overloads and you get a, and a message that pops up that basically says like, ah, oh, you know, uh, gosh, I forget what the message says, but it'll pop up and stop you and say that the system is overloading. That is because the preferences, uh, the buffering is not set correctly and that's okay. We'll just go to preferences and we'll go to audio. And then we are going to select our buffer size. We're going to move it down if that is what's happening. And then as we start getting into mixing and adding more plugins, we're going to move it up because it's going to need, it's going to need to be um, set higher to be able to handle the extra processing. 